Every group, every society needs heroes. We need figures who uh, warn us away from cynicism. And the danger with heroes is that we reduce them to one message or one event. We need to release Shevchenko from that. This portrait behind me of um, the African-American um, actor Ira Aldridge. Shevchenko was a great admirer of the actor. He painted Ira on the fly in a kind of impromptu setting, having seen Ira Aldridge perform Lear in St. Petersburg at Marinsky Theater in 1858. Aldridge sits down, he is squirming and laughing, driving Shevchenko absolutely crazy. Shevchenko keeps very sternly asking him to uh, stay still. He's using his interpreter to convey the message. Aldridge will not comply. At one point he asks if he can sing, and then he gets up and starts singing and dancing around the room. Shevchenko is so invested in his portrait um, that he doesn't take to this quite well straight away. But within minutes, up he springs, uh, dancing himself, singing Ukrainian uh, folk songs with Aldridge. And what I love about this episode is immediately it brings us away from this figure that we see ossified on granite pedestals on statues around the world. And we have a portrait of the artist himself. And this vibrant individual is brought to life in that kind of episode. And Aldridge draws it out of Shevchenko. <laughs> Shevchenko was born a slave, born a serf, um, the property of another individual, and who at the age of 24 um, is freed from bondage. The owner was named Pavel Engelhardt. So Engelhardt uh, was, was used to taking advantage of, of Shevchenko's gifts as an artist, and he could see the interest that these other artists in Petersburg um, had towards Shevchenko, um, so asked a princely sum in return. So what these artists um, did was organize a, a, an auction and use the proceeds from that auction to free uh, this 24-year-old artist. Shevchenko has had such a personal, intimate knowledge and exposure to systemic oppression. In the middle of the 1840s, he returns to Ukraine as a member of an archaeographic commission to draw the various sites in the Ukrainian lands of archaeographical uh, interest. And when he returns to Ukraine, he sees a place that has uh, been left to rot, in his view. And this is when he writes some of his most, let's say, politically radioactive poetry. Um, this poetry was not meant for publication, but around this time he joins something called the Cyril and Methodian Brotherhood, a group of individuals who believed very much in the ideals of freedom, who believed in the uh, liberation of the serfs, the education of the peasantry. He is arrested after um, a certain Petrov was listening through the wall at what these members of the Cyril Methodian Brotherhood were saying. Around the time of his arrest, he begins to write highly confessional lyric poems. So Shevchenko encouraged us as readers to reorient ourselves to language entirely. Shevchenko actually employs repetition in such an audacious way that he seizes on the word znovu again in a poem that he's writing at a time when he's encountering years of exile, years of punishment for writing poetry in the first place. And he writes this, Anumo znovu virshuvat zvichayne nishkom. Anumo znovu poki novinko na osnovi starinku božo litsyvat. Asirich, jak by vám skazat, šob nezbrkavši, a znovu znovu, lude i doliu proklinat. This use of znovu over and over again, his conversational tone. In a poem, you really feel like he's speaking to you, that he's calling you aside, specifically you, and confessing something deeply personal to himself. It comes so organically to Shevchenko that it produces this intimacy that frankly sometimes feels uncomfortable when you're a reader. These texts reveal a openly broken individual who sometimes speaks of a very violent past and present, who saw a lot of suffering, who saw a lot of violence himself. But for me, I think the, the, the poetry that, that can give us um, moments of contemplation, particularly now in this world we live in, are these more lyrical poems that bravely expose an individual with complex ideas, contradictory thoughts, and is content to let those contradictions exist and flourish. 
there's a very sad irony that Shevchenko died um, effectively only weeks before serfdom was abolished in um, the Russian Empire in 1861. But the refrain, I think, that um, most typifies Shevchenko's own attitude to this failure of the present is Minulov se a nepropalo. That is, things have passed, things have transpired, but not all is lost. It's not all gone. There are new people coming to renew the promise of the past for the purpose of the future. And that keeps coursing through Ukrainian society. And if it does, I think in terms of civil society in particular, it will remain robust, healthy, and vibrant.